Thank you so much, and uh, I agree. I don't think I deserve much of this. So uh, my talk is, uh, will be focusing mainly on the, so it's the green button, right? Uh, focusing mainly on comparing the clinical utility of doing whole genome and whole exome. Uh, I'm sure all of us in the clinic, we start normally by, you start with your history, physical examination, then you go ahead, you do your basic metabolic workup, you do your genetic workup, if you are lucky or a good dysmorphologist or it's a single gene disorder, you will go directly to that gene or you will use a wide, a high throughput testing modalities like array or WES. And then if all these turn to be negative, you'll ask yourself, do I need to do whole genome sequencing or no? How much whole genome sequencing will add to my management to my patient? And that's exactly what we are trying to answer here. So, does the whole genome is the king of all tests as initially we claimed or something or some? So uh, in order to answer this question, we recruited 100 patients who had all initial testing until WES, and then all were negative. And then we did the whole genome. So we had 108 patients, completely evaluated history, physical examination, basic metabolic and genetic testing, RACGH, WES is negative, and then we did the whole genome sequencing. This, uh, this study was done at uh, King Abdullah Medical King Abdullah Specialty Children's Hospital in Riyadh, was approved and was conducted between 2013 and 2016. Whole exome sequencing and whole genome sequencing all were done in, with a cap or clear diagnostic, we used alumina and ion proton. And this is a, just a summary for our working bioinformatic pipeline. We start with the fast queue, we do, we do our quality control, then we end up with filter DCF. All of this is an automated. Here is more of a manual workflow. And then when, whenever we had any, VC, uh, we look all BCF files in the exome, in the genome, we compare them. Whenever we have any suspected variants, we go and do our classification on the ACMG guidelines, and for any variance has been identified, we confirm it by Sanger. Sorry, it's just how to go back. We confirm it by Sanger, fragment analysis, or any other method, and the tools that we use, maybe you will be aware of some of them. This is Magin, it's our local database that we use at the National Guard Hospital. Maybe we'll talk about it more. And then, so this is first slide about result. So again, we have 100 patients who underwent all the clinical history, physical examination, RACGH, WES, all are negative. We did the genome, and out of these 110 patients, we had nine, 10 patients with a 9% who tend to be positive. That means 10% were a whole genome, and 10% whole, your whole genome could provide an additional hit rate compared to the exome. Now, if we look into this, then we went back and tried to reanalyze the data. Why we had, why these 10 patients were not detected by the genome? Why the whole genome missed to or not missed, failed to detect these cases? And there were many variables and factors. Factors, we tried to cluster them into one, time interval, two CMV or non-coding variant, three sequencing system, and I will go through each one of them. The average time of testing when we did WES to genome was ranging from one month to six months. So we did WES now, WES is negative, when you will do the genome? And the average in the whole cohort was around one and a half year. Uh, that's the mean. The average was five months between these two tests. And in this five months, there will be many, 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 many genes will be discovered. Every year there are around 200 genes discovered. And it happened that for case number one, case number two, and case number three, three genes have been discovered only because after the initial WIS was done or were done. And we can, and then we look, this is like for the first case, this case caused spinal cerebellar attacks, yeah, this gene, this epileptic encephalopathy, and this is neurodegeneration. And if we look in the raw data and the BCF file, this is case number one, I'm sorry, maybe 
So I'll look here, maybe it's easier. So this is case, this is case number three. This is the gene name. This is the coding variant, C1527, it's a deletion. It's being called by the GAT caller in the whole genome with a decent coverage. We looked back at the initial WIS that was done and was negative. It's also, is called even with a better coverage. The only reason why when we reported this case, we did not report it, because the gene was not known at that time. As simple as this. So we did the whole genome. While the variant was sitting there, it was detected in the West, but only because the gene was not described at that time. So is this clear? Now, this is one reason. So it's not, a huge, it's not a, really an advantage of the genome. It's more of a limitation of our interpretation. Two, where it is an effect of the structural rearrangement. So this is a case is sort of typical presentation of tuberous sclerosis too. We did all the testing, negative. And then we did a genome, and in the genome we found this deep intronic variant. You can see it's 281, which is between exon 9 and exon 10, and this variant will not be detected by the exon, because exon is basically looking plus minus 20. It will not go until 281. And if we look at the raw data, whole genome sequencing, the coverage in this area is 30x. However, on West, the coverage in this area is zero. This variant will not be picked up by exome, but it will be picked up by a genome. Next, this is in a case of pneumonia myopathy. And we did an exome again. Exome is turned to be negative. We did a genome. The genome found a deletion. We heard today about CMV detection on by doing using NGS. Even with an exo with a genome, you might be able to detect a deletion. The deletion was not very big enough to be detected by an RACGH. Uh, however, whole genome sequencing may be able to help you and solve this case for a deletion. So this is an additional, this is an advantage. A case will not be detected by exome, but it will be detected by a genome. Next, this is Case one, two, three, four, all presented with similar, sort of similar presentation, hypotonia, global developmental delay, and in all these four cases, we did an exome, exome was negative. We did a genome, genome turned to be positive. Why? And if you look in all these cases, case from one to four, the gene is already well known at two, from 2013. It's actually being described by Dr. Fauzan. And the variant is a missense variant, so it's, so it's not a gene that newly discovered. It's not a missense, it's not an encoding variant. This is a missense variant, it should be covered. However, if we look at the raw data, for example here, this is the location, actually case seven, eight, and nine is the same disorder. And here in this position, it's not covered in the West. It's very well covered by the genome. Uh, why it was not covered? We looked into different factors. We tried to analyze. And uh, and even though in our local database, we have identified this variant three times in subsequent runs. And we know this variant is a pathogenic. It's in Clumpa pathogenic. And if we look at the BAM file in subsequent runs, in the exome, it is there. This variant is very decently covered. This variant is very decently covered. It is in our database. Why the exome, initial exome, missed this variant? And we think the it's, Basically, the initial run was done on using, using ion proton platform and using old kits. And when we did the genome with the alumina new kits, we were able to detect these variants. Even, the, even in this, this was done on the alumina. In the ion proton, we couldn't find any coverage in this area. So that's now, that's, this was my first slide. I just maybe have three slides more. This was my first slide. The texture rate was 9%. However, if we eliminate some of the cases where it's not really an advantage of a genome, it's more of a limitation of us or interpretation, this hit rate could go to 7%. So that means 10 patients detected. In reality, they are seven patients because it's just maybe a time interval that only the gene has been discovered of the exome. If we take it further to the next step, if I eliminate all these four cases, because it's really, we're not detected by exome 
or they were not missed, they were just missed because of the initial run, all testing, but it's not an advantage of a genome. They had, we were able to detect this variant only by exome. So these are four patients. Now, initially 10 patients, we went down to seven patients, and now we are only at three patients. Only really three patients out of 100 patients completely detect, detected by a genome and will be completely, you will not be able to detect them by exome. And so this is a seven, nine percent. If we take this time interval, three patients, non-coding variant, three patients, and sequencing system, four patients, if you ignore this, the hit rate of the whole genome will be seven percent. If you ignore the sequencing system and eliminate it, the hit rate is really for a genome is only 3%, where a variant will be detected by a genome and not exome. And that means 30% of the cases detected by a genome, just by looking at the data, only looking at the raw data, it's just the time. You just need to revisit your data every six, every six months instead of doing a genome. And to make it even, we spent an additional around two million reals, half million dollar, to achieve 7% additional hit rate. Is this a justified cost-effective testing? I don't know, and this is debatable. If you are in a rich hospital place, it might be okay for you to spend this amount of money only for 7%. Uh, so in summary and conclusion, WIS is a more powerful tool. I agree, that's not even a debatable. However, it's only at least 7% or even 3%. I would consider this as a limited, not significant. And I would go, and I would just before doing a whole genome sequencing, I would re go and revisit the WIS data before ordering a whole genome testing. And uh, this paper has been, if you want to read more about this work, this paper has been accepted for publication in genetics and medicine. Uh, it will be soon published. And uh, uh, this is just one last slide. Uh, this is our local database. We called it Majin. It's the sum of the genome in Arabic. And we are sharing this data with anyone who wants to contribute. We are providing in this data allele frequency classification of some of the variants who, if, we, if I classified it, you can access and see it. It's more targeted to the Arabic population. Now in Saudi Arabia, we have almost three hospitals are contributing into this database and we'll be more than happy to collaborate with other institutions. Uh, thank you so much for listening. I would like to thank uh, especially Ms. Lam Yisbe'i and Ms. Taghrid al I think they are here. They are our genetic counselors and they are the one who really worked very hard on this work. Thank you so much. Yeah, I tried to finish before time even. Yes, <laughs> Just four questions. Uh, so what's your advice to us? Well, if you have money, go for genome. If you don't have money, do revisit the exome. Uh, I think this is a challenge. Until the price of a genomes, we spent two million reals for only three patients. Would you just, can you justify yeah. this? I, I think cost, cost matters, but I think also the, um, the cost of uh, whole genome sequences is going down, and I think in probably four or five years, it will probably hit rock bottom and probably be on the bedside rather than actually in a lab. So um, maybe then we go for whole genome. If uh, that, w that's exactly my last slide. Unless the cost of the genome is reasonable, you yeah. may even do, you don't need to go to an exome, you go just directly to a genome instead of doubling the test and doubling the cost. You just go directly to a genome. But until that time, do you have a patient? Okay, so what are you doing to the rest of the negatives? So we think, if, that's a good point. Uh, if I told you how many variants in these negative cases, we have 5,000 intronic variants. I don't know how to solve these cases. <laughs> We are now, we have one case where we did the index, the brother, the sister, the cousin, the father, the mother. We have, we have lots of money maybe. So we did genome for all these six cases and we ended up with 1,000 variants. So, so we still are, are learning, I suppose. It's more an entrance variant yeah. where we don't know how to handle these variants. Yeah. We cannot read it, interpret it, classify it. Well, thank you very much, thank uh, you. Doctor. <laughs> Thanks a lot.